Put me Look, on to Brother Zion, mm -hmm. you like on the other, like on the on one end of the spectrum with your with your complexion, right? right. How did that affect you growing up? Well, it was tough did, because um, did you feel like the separation, people kind of shunning you, or people? You know, coming at you and stuff like that. It's Did you make fun of light skinned people? The light skinned guys? Oh, my clap back. My clap back is real. Did you make fun of the light skinned guys? You know anything about me? My clap back is real. But, um, yeah, I definitely, uh, one of the most horrifying and I want to say to a certain extent traumatic comments I ever received was from this gorgeous, gorgeous brown sister. I'll never forget her. Although I'm not going to say her name. <laughs> I was about uh, 15 or 16 years old. And uh, she was interested in um, hanging out with me, let's say. And um, she said to me, um, you know we can't be boyfriend and girlfriend. I said, wow. She said, well, that will probably eventually lead to us getting married and having children. I said, what's wrong with that? She said, well, don't get me wrong. You, you cute and stuff for a dark skin guy. But I, I said, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't hear you. <laughs> Say it again? She said, no, you, you're cute for a dark skin guy. I said, and you don't understand that there could be something wrong or nothing wrong in that? No, I'm complimenting you. That's a compliment. Yeah. I said, let, let, me, let me say something to you. I said, you ever been in a zoo? I said, yeah. I said, you ever looked at some of the animals in the zoo? I said, yeah. You ever looked at some of them animals and said to yourself, hmm, you're cute for a dolphin? <laughs> She got it. She got the point. You know, um, my black skin when I was younger was a was a shame uh, badge for me. Today I, I wear it as a as an emblem of, of 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 my great spiritual alchemy as well as my physical alchemy. But as a child, and I was I was ashamed to be black. You know, in, in my childhood years, being somebody that's born in 1979, I basically grew up in the 80s. And for most of the 80s, you know, no disrespect, we had the Al B. Shaw brothers. <laughs> I don't know, that ain't me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, mean? well, I ain't looking I'm, like I'm, that. that. I'm going to bring them back in. We also had the Bruce Leroy brothers, wow. you know, the Last Dragon <laughs> brothers. You know, we weren't in until the Wesley Snipes, the late oh, 80s. Okay. <laughs> that's when purple black came back on the scene. Right. I, came yeah, see, I, I, I came around that time, so that's when I got kicked out. I'm, that's I'm, right. I don't even hit the Y'all was invoked for a while, but y'all y'all coming back. You see? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Drake, Drake, not even because of Drake. No, Aubrey giving y'all a comeback. Uh, he, he's, but, he's, uh, he's 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 yeah, he's bringing you know, it down for them. I think the most damaging thing for me, right. without calling out family members by name, because when I speak on camera, sometimes my family is able to see this, so I don't want to call people out by name. Without calling family members out by name, the most damaging part about me being shamed because of being a little darker was the fact that I noticed that family members treated darker siblings and darker children a little different. For instance, you would go to your average Caribbean home. I'm not going to use my home, for example, because I don't want to catch any feelings in my family. We get the point. Right? <laughs> but you go to the average Caribbean home, and obviously, as black people, you're going to have some brown, some light-skinned, and some dark-skinned people in your family. Yeah. But in a Caribbean home, which is the home that I grew up in, you're going to see all the light-skinned children's pictures prominently featured. Mm -hmm. So the light-skinned children's pictures are going to be that portrait that's about this big. The big one that they give you. A and the dark-skinned kids, they're going to be like, hold on, I got a picture of Alex. <laughs> <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> but the light-skinned kid going to be as big as this right here. But my picture gonna come from the wallet, cause wallet you know, side. it's wallet Although size. Although they got the big one too. Although they got the big one too, <laughs> you know. So to to make it, you know, clear, I definitely grew up um, being ashamed of how dark I was. Um, I would say up until age fifteen, man. Uh, then about sixteen, I came across this book called. Um, it was written by a PhD holder too, a black guy from Temple University. It's called Melanin. The key to our chemical greatness, a yellow book, powerful book. Because before then, I was familiar with melanin because my dad, being a Rastafarian, he would always tell us about the power of melanin in our skin 
But this book taught me that melanin exists in every facet of the universe. Right. That there's no organ in the human body that doesn't have melanin in it. That there is no aquatic life in the ocean that doesn't have melanin in it. In fact, the main property of melanin is not that it's protecting the skin from the rays of the sun. The main pro property of melanin is that wherever you find melanin, period, be it the human body or in the astral bodies in the universe, it is protecting the essence of that object, period. So when you find it in the skin, it's protecting the skin. But we also have melanin in our organs. So when you have melanin in your organs, it's also protecting the heart. It's protecting the liver, the spleen, the kidneys. Wherever you find melanin, its job is to maintain optimal health in the object or around the object it surrounds or pervades. And it was then that I began to understand that, wow, being a black man that in today's language we would say is heavily melanated, that also meant that there was something great about me being of this hue in the sense that when you have something that's precious, you know that there's a great deal of care that goes into the upkeep and the intake of that, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, black people with darker hue, we need lotion. <laughs> now, I know me, I'm not gonna apply something cosmetic like lotion on just anything. I'm gonna apply it on something of value. We know that people of other hues of different races they don't use those types of cosmetics because the reality is the mechanisms behind the scenes or underlying their skin is not operating on the same level of mind. In fact, we see today that many different races of higher hues, what they're actually doing is they're going into the laboratory and they're saying, hey, you know, I know it was cool 10 or 20 years ago to get a tan, but what about this melanin injection? A lot of people don't know that you can now inject melanin into the skin. This is where science is now taking us. In fact, what we don't realize as black people, I used to work for a gold company where we uh, melted gold on an armored truck. I believe I discussed this with you before in one of our interviews. What I realized about gold from this company is that if you got an ounce of gold, you got twelve to $1,300 if you're in the United States. Ounce of gold, that's the going rate. But guess what? You know what an ounce of melanin is? <laughs> Times that by about 19. An ounce of melanin is about 20,000, about 20 grand, an ounce. Mm. So, segueing that into this conversation, what do you really think is the reality behind thousands of black people missing in America? What do you really think about the reality the underlying reality behind finding some of these black people that are missing and you don't find any of their organs. Mm -hmm. What we don't realize is that black people are valuable, not just because of the intellectual ideals that they hold and have given and birth to humanity, but also because of their very skin, their very body, the mechanics of their bodies. The black body today on the black market is extremely valuable. Hence why we can go throughout the United States and now it's even coming into the Caribbean and see scores of black women and men missing. There have been black women and men in police custody that died suddenly. And the family now prepares them for funeral and the funeral home says, all the organs are missing. Mm. Well, are the police stashing hearts as evidence? Where are these organs going? We as a people have to realize that white supremacy is founded upon one thing and one thing only. And it's called genetic survival. Mm -hmm. Without having to lift a gun or a knife, black people because of their dominant genes, have the ability to eliminate an entire race. In, in essence, what science is doing right now, science is caught up to the fact that black people are a valuable commodity um, as a wholesale, uh, marketable um, item. 
you can actually purchase organs of black people in what they would call um, today the dark web, uh, which is a reality. The dark web is no longer something um, that we can write off as a, as a theory or as um, you know, urban legend. The dark web is a reality, you know, where people can now go online and access things that are normally considered extremely illegal right. simply by having the right website. Mm-hmm. And, and the reality is paid, out, and it's paid <laughs> out via uh, cryptocurrency. And the reality is we as black people better realize that the struggle for our independence is greater than us arguing with one another about our beliefs.